Hello everybody, welcome to another Reading with Rick. Today we're going to jump into Thomas Merton's Thoughts in Solitude. Um, it's a relatively short book, but it's some heavy thinking. It is definitely not as digestible as something like C.S. Lewis, um, but there's some great stuff in here. Uh, it's a lot about, you know, living life as a Christian, becoming more Christ-like, getting closer to God and God's will. Um, and he, he has some interesting takes just on, you know, human nature, um, our own temperaments, um, I've not read a whole lot of Thomas Merton. I believe one of his more famous works is The Seven Story Mountain. Um, but he's a pretty well-known writer. Uh, he, he has a very interesting life. I'm not going to get into all that. Uh, but he basically visited the Abbey of Gethsemane as a young man, um, became a monk, uh, lived there, meditated there, and uh, wrote a lot of his works there, actually. Um, so today we're going to read just a short paragraph that has a lot packed in it, though, that we can take a lesson from. The Desert Fathers believed that the wilderness had been created as supremely valuable in the eyes of God, precisely because it had no value to men. The wasteland was the land that could never be wasted by men because it offered them nothing. There was nothing to attract them. There was nothing to exploit. The desert was the region in which the chosen people had wandered for 40 years, cared for by God alone. They could have reached the promised land in a few months if they had traveled directly to it. God's plan was that they should learn to love him in the wilderness and that they should always look back upon the time in the desert as the idyllic time of their life with him alone. So when we look at our own struggles, our own wasteland, if you will, most of the time, you know, it's so easy for us to just say, why is this happening to me? Why do I have to go through this? Um, but in reality, just as Merton wrote, you know, th those low moments are when God is right there with you. When you're in the desert, when there's no way for you to provide for yourself, that's when you know that it is him sustaining you. Um, there's the cliche of the person reaching the finish line, reaching their wildest dreams and kind of looking around and it's not all that it cracked up to be. They look back at those moments of struggle and realize you know, they see the beauty and the joy that they had in those moments and they yearn for it again. Um, and we are just so, we constantly obsessed with the past and the future. And that's what the Israelites did too. I mean, they're, they're looking towards the promised land or they're saying, why did you bring me out of Egypt? I'd rather be back in Egypt than out here suffering. Um, we have to get out of that mindset. We have to get out of that human mindset. Uh, we, you know, there's always a way to come out better. If we focus on serving God, if we focus on serving others, we're going to grow ourselves as well. Um, and we're going to grow towards his will because that's what we need to be focusing on. How is he using this for his will? How is he using this to glorify himself? Um, Thomas Merton, great writer, great thinking. Uh, pick up one of his books. I think you'll enjoy it. Also, check us out on stoveleg.com. Have some great content over there. Always igniting conversation. Um, it's been a pleasure. I thank you all for joining me. Love you all. God be with you. Christ bless. Have a wonderful week.